guys, welcome to Empower and my name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much as usual for watching my videos. In this video, we're going to go over disease process that you're going to see quite a bit as you work as a nurse, and that is congestive heart failure. So I did my best to give you a general overview of the disease process so that it can help you take care of your patients and also help you on your nursing exams. If you like this video and you would like to see more videos like this, please do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. Also, after the video, in the next few days, we're going to post nursing exam style questions in video format. And also, if you go to my website, which the link will be below, you can take a nursing exam or NCLEX style quiz going over congestive heart failure. So I hope all of these resources help you understand the disease process even more. Also, if you prefer to watch this video without any music at all, I totally understand. And all you have to do is click right here and you will be taken to a link to my website where you can view the video without any music at all. All right, so that any further ado, let's get started and let's go over congestive heart failure. Congestive heart failure, which is sometimes just called heart failure, is the leading cause of hospitalization in people over the age of 65, affecting about 670,000 Americans annually. Currently, nearly 6 million persons in the United States have a diagnosis of heart failure. Heart failure doesn't mean that the heart has stopped working, but that its pumping ability is weaker than normal. With heart failure, the pressure in the heart increases because the blood moves through the heart and body at a slower rate. As this happens, the chambers of the heart may slowly change by stretching to hold more blood to pump through the body or by becoming stiff and thickened. This helps to keep the blood moving for a while, but eventually the heart muscle walls become weakened and then unable to pump effectively. The next thing that usually happens is the kidneys respond by causing the body to retain fluid, basically water and salt. The body then can become congested as the fluid builds up in the arms, legs, ankles, feet, lungs, or other organs. This condition is described now as congestive heart failure. Congestive heart failure is usually a chronic illness that affects the chambers of the heart. There are four chambers in the heart. The upper half of the heart is known as the atria, which is divided into two sides, the left and then the right side, and the lower half is the left and right ventricles. A healthy normal heart is a strong muscular pump somewhat bigger than a clenched hand. It pumps blood continuously through the circulatory system. The right atria takes in deoxygenated blood from the systemic circulation and sends it back out to the lungs through the right ventricle where the blood gets to be oxygenated. Oxygenated blood leaves the lungs, travels to the left atrium, then on to the left ventricles, which pumps it to the systemic circulation to provide oxygen and nutrient rich blood to the different organs and tissues. The heart pumps blood to the lungs and all the body's different organs and tissues by a sequence of highly organized contractions of the four chambers. For the heart to function properly, the four chambers must beat in an organized way. With heart failure, the muscles become weak for various reasons, making the heart slowly lose the capacity to pump enough blood throughout the body to meet the body's demands of oxygen and nutrients. As the heart's pumping turns out to be less effective, blood may back up into different zones of the body. Fluid may build up in the lungs, liver, gastrointestinal tract, and the arms and legs. Thus, it is called congestive heart failure, which you will see abbreviated many times to CHF. There are two fundamental issues in congestive heart failure. Systolic dysfunction, which is when the heart can't pump enough blood supply to meet the body's demands. There's also diastolic dysfunction, which is when the heart cannot accept all of the blood being sent in. Sadly, many people suffer with both systolic and diastolic heart failure. Causes CHF is often a chronic condition, yet it may come on all of a sudden. It can be brought about by various heart problems. The condition may affect just the right side or the left half of the heart, but more often, both sides of the heart are involved. The most common causes of 
congestive heart failure are coronary artery disease, which is a condition where cholesterol and other types of fatty substances blocks or narrows the arteries that supply the heart with blood. This can weaken the heart muscle over time or even suddenly. Another cause is high blood pressure. Persistent, not well controlled or untreated hypertension forces the heart to pump against higher pressure, causing the heart muscles to weaken over time. Less common causes could include heart valve disease, heart valves that are not properly working by being too narrow or leaky, endocarditis or myocarditis, which are infections causing inflammation of the heart muscle, arrhythmias, heart attack, excessive use of alcohol or drugs, diabetes, being obese or overweight, high blood cholesterol, heart muscle disease of unknown cause, kidney conditions that increase blood pressure and fluid buildup, or other medical conditions such as thyroid disease and even anemia can also be causes of congestive heart failure. Signs and symptoms. The manifestations of CHF may not surface for a considerable length of time. This is due to the heart compensating when the heart is not pumping effectively. The heart will try to compensate in three ways. Dilating or stretching when the heart chamber dilates or enlarges it extends more and more. However, then it cannot contract strongly enough to pump more blood. Adding new muscle tissue, the increase in muscle mass occurs because the contracting cells of the heart get bigger. This lets the heart pump more strongly, at least initially, beating at a more rapid rate. This helps to increase the heart's output. These temporary measures mask the effects of the heart failure for a while. However, they can cannot solve the problem. These compensatory mechanisms can only work for a while. The heart's condition will continue to decline until these compensatory measures will no longer work. The heart will not be able to have the strength to pump well enough for the blood to be pushed through the systemic circulation, causing the blood backflow into the heart, lungs, and legs, thus causing congestion and fluid buildup. At this time, the client begins to experience the symptoms brought about by the condition. The most common symptoms in CHF include difficulty breathing at night or when lying flat, sudden weight gain of 1.5 to 3 kilograms over 1 to 2 days, or 2.5 kilograms or 5 pounds in a week, coughing and wheezing, fatigue and weakness, shortness of breath, swollen ankles, feet, legs, abdominal pain, bloating or loss of appetite, accumulation of fluid in the abdomen, bluish skin around the mouth, constipation, pale skin, cold feet and hands, and increased urination at night. Determination of the diagnosis. To determine if a patient has heart failure, the healthcare team may use several diagnostic tests and procedures. These tests may include, but are not limited to, physical examination, which includes listening to the heart with a stethoscope to detect abnormal heart rhythms or abnormal lung sounds. Blood tests. Blood samples are drawn to analyze levels of important substances, such as electrolytes, proteins, and creatinine. Abnormal levels may indicate strain on organs, such as kidney and liver, which often results from heart failure. A blood test to check for a chemical called called N-terminal pro-B type natric peptide, also known as pro-BNP, helps in diagnosing heart failure. It measures the amount of BNP hormone in the blood. BNP is made in the heart and shows how well the heart is working. A chest x-ray could be done to know whether the heart is enlarged or if the lungs are congested. An electrocardiogram or EKG can show whether the client had a heart attack or is having a heart attack or an normal arrhythmia. An electrocardiography, which you will see abbreviated many times as echo, will show how thick the heart muscle is and how well the heart pumps. With this test, we get the EF, and usually an EF lower than 40% indicates congestive heart failure. An exercise stress test will help determine if the heart responds normally to the stress of exercise. Radionuclide ventrilography, or multiple gated acquisition scanning, aka a MUGA scan, 
shows how well the heart muscle is supplied with blood. It also shows how well the heart's chambers are working and whether part of the heart has been damaged by a heart attack. Cardiac catheterization. This will help determine if there is a blockage in the coronary arteries. Treatment and prevention. Congestive heart failure that is developed over time cannot be cured, but it can be treated to improve symptoms. Medical professionals may recommend medication, surgery, or suggest lifestyle changes, such as healthy eating and physical activity. The success of the treatment depends on the willingness of the client and their approach to managing the condition. Medications. Doctors may prescribe one of these medications or a combination. Angiotensin converting enzymes, also known as ACE inhibitors. These expand blood vessels, allowing blood to flow more easily, making the heart's work easier and effective. Angiotensin receptor blockers, also known as ARBs, may be useful in place of ACE inhibitors or used in addition to ACE inhibitors. Beta blockers. Beta blockers are proven to help improve the heart's function. Aldosterone receptor agonist blocks the effects of aldosterone. Aldosterone can make CHF worse. It also helps the body eliminate excess salt and water. Diuretics. Diuretics can help the body eliminate excess salt and water. Digoxin. Digoxin can increase the force of the pumping action of the heart. Surgery and device therapy. Depending on the severity and nature of the heart failure, surgery and device therapy may be recommended to manage the condition. Some procedures can be cardiac resynchronization therapy, which is also known as CRT, biventricular pacing, which is a special pacemaker that paces both the left and right-sided chambers of the heart, and implantable cardioverter defibrillation, also known as ICD, left ventricular assistive device, heart transplantation, for blocked coronary arteries, coronary angioplasty, with stent or bypass surgery. Lifestyle adjustments. Cut back on fluids. No more than two liters or six to eight regular glasses of fluids per day. Remind your patient that this includes all beverages. Also remind your patient that weighing daily is often necessary to help adjust fluid intake. Also remind your patient to stay active but avoid triggering the CHF symptoms. Lower sodium intake is recommended less than 2,000 grams daily. Wearing special elastic pressure stockings to reduce swelling in the legs that can be caused by fluid retention will also help. And other just healthy things like eating plenty of fiber, avoiding too much caffeine consumption or any caffeine consumption in many cases, which will help prevent increases in heart rate or abnormal heart rhythms. Becoming smoke free. Also advise your patient to get plenty of rest and manage stress levels. Prevention. Most cases of heart failure can be prevented by living a healthy lifestyle and reducing the risk factors for heart disease. Preventative tips include control high blood pressure, eat a healthy diet, exercise, control blood sugar levels for diabetics, maintain good blood cholesterol levels, and quitting smoking. Unfortunately, heart failure has no cure currently. A person with heart failure will need to take medication and follow a treatment plan for the rest of his or her life. Even doing this, the symptoms may get worse over time as the heart failure progresses. However, researchers are always trying to find new medications, cures, or treatments that can help the person with congestive heart failure. All right, guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video going over congestive heart failure. I really hope that it helps you out a lot on your nursing journey. So like I said before, if you did like this video or if it helped you at all and you want to see more videos like this, then please do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up and watch out because in the next few days, we're going to post nursing exam or NCLEX style questions in video format. But also if you go to my website, which you can click to a link right here, you can take a nursing exam or NCLEX style quiz. So all right, guys, I really hope all of this information helps you out a lot. And I cannot wait to see you again in my next video. I love you so much. Bye.